Hello and welcome to the Harper on Rugby Preview Show. My name is Jeff. Okay, Jeff has sent me the uh, teleprompter here and he didn't change my name in it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff has not fallen off a cliff. I am Kigo. This is uh, cap number 50. Uh, when I first met everyone, I had some hair, a uh, different coloured beard with the same jersey. I'm two days in this jersey. I've got another two days to go. Happy 50th. But most importantly, let's get down to business. It's Paddy's weekend. Have you signed up to the Fanzo Harpen uh, Prediction League? Uh, if so, you will see how much better you are predicting scores than I am. Uh, I'm currently sitting at number 39 of 50. Do you want to make me feel worse about myself as we reach the final weekend of the Six Nations? Do sign up. Uh, the, the code is Harpen, I believe, H-A-R-P-I-N, and you will find us all there. Uh, but uh, Jeff gave me a big script to read, and I've completely forgotten it because my screen timed out. So, Jeff, you're going to have to finish this off for me. Uh, all this pressure on my 50th cap. Me, Gary Ringrose, all these sort of top elite players with fantastic hairlines. Uh, you know, there's not really too much else to be said. Absolutely. No, and on the contrary, I mean, you faced with a bit of adversity. The screen time out. You carried the spirit of the team from Murrayfield last week, and uh, you, you you filled in, and, and you, you did the job perfectly. Fair play to you. Um, yeah, it's your 50th appearance. I, I went back and listened to your first one. Um, it was, uh, this is now... This is a, our 234th pod overall, and you were you're, you made your debut on the 10th, and oh, wow. uh, it, it was gas because uh, I was recording in a in a different room upstairs, was right beside where my then I think she was she was only four years old. I think she was she was here to go to sleep, so my voice is a lot lower, and I'm just like, <laughs> hi, hi, welcome to welcome to Harpen on Rugby. This is Jeff Pagano, and uh, it, it was mad. It was mad listening to it, but yeah, no, it's been great. And uh, thanks for thanks for opening the show for us. But uh, let's 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 crack on now, and it's time to start harping on this week's feature match, which is as you can see there is uh, Ireland v England. It's in round five of the 2023 Guinness Six Nations. It kicks off at the Viva Stadium at 5 p.m. on Saturday, March the 18th, and the match is being broadcast on Virgin Media One and ITV One. And just one more reminder: we've had a little superstition here on the pod for the past few weeks where we don't say a certain phrase rhymes with bland jam or can jam <laughs> or um but uh so we've been keeping that going so far and uh but listen hopefully at uh um uh, 7 p.m on saturday we'll have every excuse to be shouting it from the rooftops but anyway um ireland named their starting lineup so let's get starting and uh, they, they named the starting lineup on thursday uh, finally it took all day we were waiting and waiting and waiting finally they they, they put it out there and uh, let's look through it, starting with the back line. And that's the number 15. We've got Hugo Keenan. Uh, the backs are uh, James Lowe and Mac Hansen. The centers, Wundi Aki and Robbie Henshaw. And uh, the halfbacks, Jemison Gibson Park and skipper Johnny Sexton. Look, we were, we were worried with uh, King Gary, uh, get well soon, Gary, but uh, missing. Uh, was it going to be Stu? Was it going to be Stu and Aki again getting a second chance? Was it going to be Henshaw getting in? I think the right call has been made. Henshaw's a mutant. Um, he can play both positions very well to an international level. But the, the, the amazing thing about him is, uh, no matter what the injury is, he comes back as if he's never been injured. So I know this wrist injury took a little bit longer than we all wanted, but he's going to be in there ready to rock and roll. And, and he's going to be hungry, fresh and fit. There's no bruises on him outside of whatever's happened in training. He's ready to go. And I think Aki, Aki got, a, a, he got a bit of a short trip there against Italy. It's not very fair uh, when you've got 24 adding up instead of 25 we've, we've spoken about that but I think that the, the players we need in this in this team obviously Keenan is one of the first uh, I think Hansen is showing just how amazing he is whether it's defense whether it's attack whether it's coming in field so it used to be uh, when when things were starting to turn around for this Farrell team Aki would come in at first receiver and open up the rest of the pitch Hansen is starting to come in at second receiver Sometimes he's coming in there as a dummy. It's, he is worth just spending. I don't know if Sky Sports still do it for the football, but they used to have a camera following one player for five minutes. I spent five minutes just watching Hanson run around the pitch. He's either tackling, running, catching, passing, or annoying the opposition by being a threat. So he's always available at every moment, and it's, it's well worth watching. And then it opens up the rest of the pitch. I, as you can tell, I'm, I'm very, very excited about that back line. Good at that our, our, our leader is missing uh, ring rows, but that team is that back line is you'd pay twice to watch it. Maybe not. I, I looked at tickets for the Italy game, <laughs> and even warm up games, but wouldn't pay double. But they, they look they, they're ready to go. 
with the banks going the way they are, we don't want to be talking about having to spend any more money <laughs> with what's coming down the line. But yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's a great backline, and it's far from the backline we would have we would have picked ideally uh, going into the, the the tournament. And I think that's been the thing. A lot of people talk talk about the adversity that happened in Murrayfield, but to be honest, this whole uh, Six Nations for Ireland has been about being without players that we would have expected we couldn't do without. And um, and like you say about Mac Hansen, I mean, going into the game. At Murrayfield, a lot of people said he might have been our weakness because he was going yep. against Duhan van der Merva, and it would, it would it completely turn that on its head and uh, showed him up defensively for 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 his side of things. So uh, yeah, no, it's a great team, and uh, of course Sexton leading them out there. This could be his last Six Nations, could be his last uh, Six Nations at the Aviva. All this, there's a lot, could be a lot of emotions going through there. Um, but uh, they, they they one thing they've showed us is that whatever's coming at them going into the game when it comes to the, the kickoff. Whatever fears we have, they definitely don't have them. They're ready and they're yeah. in and they're ready to go. Well, let's look at the forward. Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say, I, I'm trying not to bring that up because no matter what Sexton is, I'm not ready for him to leave either. You well, know what I mean? So <laughs> the, all, the, all the journalists were trying to get him to crack during the week and he's like, yeah. no, 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 you just wait till the 80th minute and we'll get that done. But no, it's, it, like it, it's, um, it was a similar when, when O'Driscoll were, were nearing his anniversary of his last uh, last uh, game in green as well was it Italy or whatever yeah, the game yeah, was? Yeah, I was there. Got, and a big balloon floated around the pitch. Yeah, we got <laughs> seventy-two minutes out of him that day, and and you kind of go, look, um, you know, our parents have a have their own players that they use as examples for us. They're two of ours, and uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be upsetting, but we we still got that other thing that we're not going to talk about until August. To, exactly. to, to go through as well. Exactly. Plenty of rugby to be played. Okay, so let's look at the pack now. The front row is Andrew Porter, Dan Sheehan, and Ty Furlong. Second row, Ryan Baird, James Ryan. Back row, Peter Ranney, Josh Vanderfleer, and Phelan Doris. Again, giddy up. Uh, I think the delay in the, with the announcement might have been there was rumours about Furlong needing a bit of work, uh, but obviously he's good to go. And, um, you know, we've also, we, we've also got to remember, we're going to talk about the bench, but we've also got on the bench a threat a prop hooker, loose head, um, winger. He was, uh, Leinster put a video up of him taking drop goals from the halfway line. So look, we're covered <laughs> everywhere. But if you look at that, I, 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 I'm glad Sheen's back. As we keep saying about minutes and boots, there's a lot of minutes up until this competition in his boots. Hopefully, that's not an issue. You know, with hamstrings and calves and things like that, hopefully it's not minutes that are the issue. Because we are the fittest team in world rugby. And that's something that the opposition, England won't be able to stay with us for 80 minutes. They will not be able to stay with us for 60 minutes. And it's because of the work that, you look at the work James Ryan did last week and has been doing. Um, you look at uh, Kaelin Doris coming in, um, the top two number eights in the world. And we have them in our team. Uh, Ryan Baird, I think it's great for him to show up uh, as he has been doing. Obviously with Henderson's injury, he's been the one that they've obviously anointed as 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 the next one in, and and again he's not been found wanting. Now one of these players has been found wanting. We have not given out about any of these players in now if this is cap fifty, certainly since cap thirty five. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, whether it's when Leinster and Ireland are playing anyway, any weekend uh, when the team gets announced, I'm never absolutely 100% sure that's going to be the team um, when the game actually mm -hmm. kicks off because there's a lot that can happen. But also Andy Farrell said himself uh, in the press conference that we'll see how they get on with the captain's run. We're recording before there's a captain's run. And of course, even after that, there's a full day until the game kicks off. It's a warm up. So we'll see what lineup um, actually shows up. But it's, it's good that they were at least able to name this team, name yep. Dan Sheen and Crayon Doris in the team because that's their, their crucial um, to the squad, but of course, we all know, like you said yourself, if anything happens to them, there's someone on the bench, and there's sort of Mr. Vanderfleer as well, no problem, they can fill in for, <laughs> yeah. for double roles, wherever, no, seriously, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big day for them, it's a big pack, Ryan Baird as well, um, standing yep. in for Henderson, there was, a, there was a choice between himself and Treadwell, Treadwell was there on the New Zealand tour, he's played a lot of big matches like this as well, so it's a big test for him, but obviously, and if you, you come to the stage now, if Farrell says you're ready, you're ready, and, um, and, and he's, he's good to see him line up with, with, alongside James Ryan. So let's go to that bench now anyway. And uh, we've got Rob Herring, Keen Healy, and Tom O'Toole, front row, Kieran Treadwell, and Jack Conan. And then the backs are Connor Murray, Ross Byrne, and Jimmy O'Brien. This, it's, I, I know we have injuries, and I know we have people coming out, but if you look at this 1-23, to 23, it is frightening. 
the job that has been done since King Joe left us in terms of bringing players through. Jimmy O'Brien, again, can play anywhere. We keep talking about Jack Conan every single week and every single jersey he puts on. Uh, Ross Byrne, great to see him kind of nailed on. But Treadwell coming in, as you say, he could have just jumped straight into the second row. But uh, there, there's face shown in Baird, but there's no, there's there's minimal gap between them. And I think uh, like Tom O'Toole, I think is obviously aside from Healy and the job he's doing, which is is, is a frightening and amazing thing. I think Tom O'Toole has been Tom O'Toole and Mac Hansen for me are the two guys on this on this in this tournament who have shown um, whether they're on the okay Tom O'Toole's come on, but they are uh, pivot points. So when anytime Tom O'Toole has come on, he's gone forward, he's gotten everything moving again, and he has done a job similar to when Aki used to come on late in the game. Um, and I'm delighted that he's he's remained there. Uh, it's a great super sub to have. I'm I'm beyond excited. You know, you think about the players who are not in there, even in our other jerseys, not that it's about provincial jerseys, but if you think about the players who are there ready to come in, Larmer, Osborne, there's a huge amount of those players who are who are well capable of coming in, and these players are the ones that take the pitch, and you can't argue with a single call. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at the, um, you, it's funny you mentioned there about uh, Joe Schmidt and how how different this team is to that. Um, you know, they played. We we all love what Joe Schmidt did. He he brought us a lot. What ways? Yep. When he left, there were work-ons, and the fans were screaming for 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 a few things. They were screaming for um, a more attacking outlook. They were they were screaming for us to have, go into matches with the plan B, and they were screaming for depth. And I think it's safe to say that uh, Andy has and it, it ticked all those boxes off and more. I mean, you talk about depth. Right as we're talking, the uh, Leinster School Senior Final is, is being played. I have it on here, and they're just a few minutes in. They both scored a couple of amazing tries. The standard that's coming through the pipeline all over the country is amazing. So he's got amazing depth, which means he can pick the team he wants to play we want. Of course, there's a lot of provincial crap goes on. We should be selecting this guy over that guy, whatever. We hear all that on the Twitter machine. We deal with that all the time. But you can tell he's focused on the players he wants to get the job done. And, and like you say, this bench reflects that. There was a lot of talk over the 23 jersey for the bench who would get it. Uh, maybe say some someone say maybe Stu McCluskey because he's done really well and he has done really mm -hmm. well when, when called upon so far. But Andy Farrell himself said, um, it was uh, Jimmy's versatility that gets him. And that's the thing about that 23 jumper. You want someone who can slot in to certain positions, and that's certainly something he can do. Uh, McCluskey's more of a specialist 12. So once the decision was made to go with Aki, uh, unfortunately, that meant someone like McCluskey was going to miss out. But it's a great bench, and there's a lot of different options there for sure. Okay, right now it's time to have a look at our opposition, which is, of course, England. As ever, my graphics department will put uh, the names on the screen at the bottom. If you're listening to the podcast, you can find them in the program notes. What do you think of their lineup? I, I've got to phrase this correctly, okay? It's Paddy's mm -hmm. weekend. We're all very excited. I'm going to be in this jersey for two days. It's going to be stinking by the time we get to Sunday. England are in a lot of trouble. Um, they are, there, there are very few bright sparks in that team. And the way, obviously, the English media are, are, are animals. They all turned on Smith and all that sort of stuff. Um, and... And I think when you don't pick him, I'm just looking at the squad here. Um, did they pick him? No, they didn't pick him. He's on the bench. So that's yeah. That's 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 a that's that's between the years. That's him gone. Yeah. And they're what they're going to do is if if they are close, which they won't be, and I've I've got to I've got to temper my language because I'm feeling. Um, things like canned ham and all that sort of stuff. I feel that we have to start verbalizing these things. Yeah. We can't be, we've spoken about it before. We can't be frightened of it. And we're not frightened of this England team because Borthwick is not, what happened at Leicester happened at Leicester. And that's, that's with all due respect to the Gallagher Premiership, it's not good. And it's falling in on itself. He, he doesn't have the players. The players are not fit enough. The players are not good enough. So, you know, they're, they're hoping for magic from Farrell. They're hoping that they can get a bit of a good shunt at the beginning because they picked a big front row. They picked a big pack. But there's nothing in that team that any of the Irish guys are going to go if, if we slip up here. Because the, if, if, if Ireland show up at 80%, this is a big score. Um, now, I think the things that Borthwick has done, this, he, he, it's a free game for him, basically. 
So you could have kept Smith in there and said, I have faith in you. This is a three-year project I've got with you or whatever. It's a certain amount of time I'm going to invest in you. We're going to work on things from last week and we're going to see improvements going forward. He could have done that. But instead of that, he let the pressure get to him, which Farrell would never let the pressure, hasn't let the pressure get to him. Borthwick retreated back and said, look, we're, it's his fault. Basically what he said is it's, it's Smith's fault. That's going to permeate through the team. England are going to try and start big. We know what they're going to do. They are not going to be able to stay with us fitness-wise, skill-wise. They're not going to be able to read us. If they start looking at Mac Hansen, then they're going to miss Hugo Keenan. If they look at Hugo Keenan, they're going to miss Kalen Dars. If they look at Kalen Dars, they're going to miss Furlong. So like, they don't have the ability to read what we're doing. So we have to go in there and with respect of preparation, really put the foot down on these people because we don't get a chance to put a score like this on England that often. Now, I know there's pressure, but this is what we want. We want this pressure. We want this canned ham. We want everything. So we've got to go and perform. That England team is not going to threaten us if we operate at 80%, anywhere near 80%. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from England's point of view, uh, whatever happens, they um, they at least have to try to put last week's result in uh, out of the system. I mean, it just. I mean, I, I I agree with you that they shouldn't have put all the, the the blame on one player. But I mean, it wasn't just losing home to France; it's the way they lost, and they they yeah, they, yeah. they they've got to show a reaction to that. But of course, they're coming against uh, they're coming against us the way we're playing now and what we're playing for and all that stuff. So um, I mean, if I'm them, I the, the the only thing they can really do is just try to focus maybe on one aspect of our game and shut, try to shut that down. And even though we've shown that we're good at reacting to that adversity, still make us have to do it again. They've got, they, yeah. they can't just play the same. They can't just, they, they've got to react. They've got to play to our game. There's, they'll be watching their DVDs. They'll be picking one aspect, maybe our line out or something or some, some little thing they've seen. We saw the way the Scots got their try uh, mm-hmm. in the first second, first few minutes against us. They, that was from homework, and, and that worked. And their their defense was also shutting us down in those early stages. So um, they they've got to do the similar to that and and make us react again, and 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 then work from there and see how they go. It's it's really it's really all they can do. Yeah, come on. Sorry, just just one thing on that. Absolutely, that's what they have to do. But they also know that they're going to have to do it for eighty minutes. Yeah. So this is this yeah. is the 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 the, fit, the controlling the controllables. Whereas Joe was trying to control uncontrollables. We love you, Joe. But we can go and tackle for 90 minutes. They have to, these things that we're talking about, they will have to do it for at least 80 minutes. If the ball's in play for 35 to 40 minutes, they will not have the gas to do that. So they know that. So they're going to go for it. Even if they score early, they know that they can't retreat at any point. And then all of a sudden, after the orange at halftime, and then maybe we start making changes at the hour mark and they see Tom O'Toole, Healy, all these players coming on, um, they're going to go, Genie Mac, we have nothing in the tank. We have nothing left. And that's when the strangulation comes in. That's when this kind of, um, you know, worrying about hamstrings and calves, but that's where this all pays off. They're, there's going to be a gap that, that starts forming in this game of 65 minutes. And England will not be able to handle that. And it may only be third gear for us, whatever it is. Fourth gear, let's be, let's be nice. If it's fourth gear, they won't be able to get near it. And, and it's a bit like Mike Tyson in the 80s. You know what he's going to do. You know Ireland are going to be fitter than everybody else. You have to try and navigate that. And that's a that's extra pressure. And, and, and this team, England just don't have it between the years. Maybe they will down the line. But it's just as we're sitting presently, they don't have it. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to move on to the officials now. And as you can see there, the referee is a Yako Piper. Now, I just have, I normally don't say anything about the officials. And I want to, I want to word this right here. Um, I have a little problem with there being a French assistant ref. Now, I'm not saying France. I'm not saying referees are un- are are unbiased. I actually think that I know I know they are. I know they're professionals and they don't factor in these things in. I just it's the optics of it. The way this championship works out. I remember there was a remember there was a championship where we 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 had a chance of winning the championship and it depended on France against Scotland and it came yeah. down to a try decision at the end and the guy in the booth was Irish. That they had to make the TMO call, and I just and I remember I, that annoyed me that he had to make that call. Not that he wouldn't be professional, it just wasn't a good look, and that's that cosmetic thing that I have a problem with. And the way this Saturday works out is that um, 
there's very every possibility France are going to beat the bejesus out of Wales, and uh, which means that if we don't, which you're talking about pressure, Ireland under pressure, that'll be pressure on us because it's literally win and you win everything, can't ham all of us. Um, lose and you get nothing. That's that's the that's the way it's going to be for us. And we, we we want that kind of pressure, especially with the thing going on at the end of the year. So it's just the look of a French um, uh, a French guy. There could be a try yeah. in the corner. It could be down to him. That's all I'm saying. It's not a big deal. I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but I just wanted to make that point. Right. That's it. Rant over. <laughs> on to the weather. The weather sounds like it's going to be perfect conditions. I hope this is all true. Um, it's going to be partly cloudy. It's going to be five degrees, just one percent chance of rain. Not much wind. It sounds going to it's going to be perfect weather conditions. Fingers crossed that holds up. Which brings us on to our predictions and um, Super Saturday. That's what it is, and it starts with Scotland against Italy. How do you see it going? Uh, I think Scotland are going to win. Um, I don't think I think it's going to be a fairly muck game. You know, let's say plus seven or so. Um, Everyone should join the, the the fantasy league for the last weekend. To see how badly I get these wrong. <laughs> Scotland by seven. Okay, and uh, then we've got uh, over to Paris and France hosting Wales. It's France by fifteen twenty. Massive. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, Juan Gatton's gone for a, a more a conservative. Uh, you could say conservative because it's more experienced lineup. Um, that he's gone for, but uh, then you just can't, whatever they do, you can't look past that French 20, 23 and, and see anything but a, a decent home win, especially after what they did last week. And of course, yeah. that leaves the only really important match uh, on Saturday, and that's uh, at 5 o'clock at the Viva Stadium. Us by double figures, uh, at least 10. Okay, very good. Please, God, figure. Make note to self, get the bleeper uh, activated. <laughs> activated. Um, okay, that's great. Listen, just one more thing um, before we get in. Just want to shout out, of course, to the uh, Wolf Puppies or the Under 20s, whatever you want to call them. They've got their own uh, bland jam uh, going uh, on, uh, on, on Sunday at the same time, 5 o'clock. And uh, so be sure to tune into that. And hopefully, we'll have uh, two big celebrations going on this weekend. Right, we're going to leave it there. Many thanks to Kiko for joining me for another preview show. Absolutely. And, uh, we're, we're ready for Paddy's weekend. We're ready for a big weekend. Absolutely. And everyone check out his website, kegolaps.com, for news of his latest gigs and also his podcast, Apologies Up Front. As ever, the relevant links can be found in the program notes. Be sure to join the conversation on Mastodon throughout the match, then maybe head over to our Facebook page at full time and leave your thoughts there. In the meantime, enjoy your Paddy's weekend wherever you are. Stay safe, everyone. Go on. <laughs>